Hey, hi, hello, and welcome to this episode of Fantasy for the Ages, the show where father and son sit down and talk about fantasy books. I'm the son of that equation, Zach. And I'm the father, Jim. Thanks for joining us here today for one of our to read or not to read episodes. I'm smiling because you said your normal banter at the beginning, Zach, but you used the word fur instead of four. And we just talked about this in the last episode, but it just rolls out and it was totally fur. I mean, sometimes it's fur, sometimes it's four. I actually had the thought after we were talking about it that it partially depends on context. If I'm talking at the like beginning of a sentence, I'll usually say four. But if it's somewhere linked in to the sentence, that makes it'll sense. be a linking fur. And it's not a fur as in F-U-R fur, but rather a fur, F-E-R fur. <laughs> It's good that it's not an F U R. <laughs> anyway, I mean, you know what we have done? This is our last episode, by the way. In it's season our last two. episode? Nope. Finish the comment. Last <laughs> episode of season two. This makes two full years of episodes. So our next recording will start season three of Fantasy for the Ages. But how appropriate that we've done something, I think, for the first time. We carried a tangent over to a second episode. I mean, I don't think that's the first time. I, I really it's don't. It's the first time we've documented it. It's the first time you've chosen to talk about it. But I'm pretty sure, like, we've talked about things before in multiple episodes. I talk yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. The troubles but when they're a, When they're a true tangent. You know, okay, anyways, enough of that. <laughs> How you doing right now, son? I'm doing fine. Uh, as sometimes we are recording a second episode in a row, um, I'm down for it. Admittedly, rolling into my next part of what we're drinking, I'm am but not because I actually have places to be after this, so I can't be continuing to drink yet. I got to stay safe. Um, how are you doing, doing, Dad? Wow, I'm um, better wow. than you. I'm going nowhere. So mm. I made a Long Island iced tea for the second episode. Mm. And that first yeah, drink was pretty good. So this this is, uh, I mean, it's to the brim. And there's not that much ice in there. And I it's know melting. you. There's like a drop of Coke in there. I actually, okay, this is funny. You see to get the color, the darkness? Mm -hmm. I've already taken three big swallows so I could get enough Coke in. To change the color. That's probably not good. But no, it's it's I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> it's <laughs> and dinner is already cooking. I can't burn the house down. I did a slow cooked meal today. It's been Look, cooking for hours. It smells it's great. a good thing that your taste in cocktails does not require precise ratios to accomplish the flavors that you want. Rather, instead, you can put a lot of whatever the things that you wanted in there and the end up with something that you enjoy is for color in a Long Island iced tea. It's not about the flavor. But I'm so also going right. to say the rest of it's not really for flavor either. <laughs> if you're drinking a Anyways, Long Island, it's usually for the alcohol content. So your your blinds are pulled back. It's dark by you already, isn't it? Uh, dark? No. Darker? Yes. Okay. I mean, I mean we are at the really short time sunny. of the year. It does get dark pretty early now. It's almost winter solstice. Oh, just just because oh? updates how I'm doing. Uh, darkness. It's gonna start getting darker for me. Uh, for me, when I get home sooner, but not because it is sooner. Uh, I'm doing a thing to open. We're opening some evening stuff out at work. Whole different thing for me. Um, but it will free up my mornings for some continued schooling stuff and. Oh, Point well, being, that's good to hear. It'll be dark when I get home a lot more, even as we get gotcha. brighter again. Total tangent, totally not. Ooh, let's go fantasy. Yeah, enough of the tangents. And in fact, we don't have any notes we really talk about in these episodes, other than we do need to connect on reminding you of the format of what this is. So a to read or not to read this is one where we're going to talk about some series we're familiar with. It will be spoiler light. If you haven't read it yet. We're not going to ruin the plot lines for you, but we will give you a general crux of what the story is about. Very high level. Very. We are going to give you some opinions about this, though. 
highly subjective opinions based on our taste, our thoughts on what this series is about. We respect there are alternate opinions. Some of you may listen to this and you've read this series, this trilogy, and you think we are out of our minds. We respect that. Let us know. Please, without profanity, courteous commentary. No, you can use profanity if it involves me. It's fine. Oh, yeah, only profanity at Zach. You got that. Okay, thank you. We will give some legit reasons as we get near the end of this episode as to why you may or may not enjoy this trilogy. But again, it's based on what we happen to think. All right. What trilogy? We're talking about the Fiona Bar Tapestry by Guy Gabriel K. Yes. So here's some facts on it. This is his first published works. The Summer Tree came out, that's book one of the trilogy, mm-hmm. in 1984. The other two what books, year. The Wandering Fire and The Darkest Road, came out in 1986. So there was a gap. They didn't come out in, you know, at the same time. One came out in early 86, one came out later in 86. The crux of the story is five college students in our world who get sucked into Fionavar. A totally different world of fantasy and magic. Now, that initial premise is very similar to the Guardians of the Land series by Joel Rosenberg, whose first book came out a year earlier, 1983. And that struck me when I read this series. Mm. But don't, don't be like, oh, copycat. No, 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 no. It's got that tiny similarity, but there are vast differences yeah, that's in this about trilogy. Where the similarity ends. Yeah, yeah. Particularly as the five students in the Fiona Bar trilogy, they go into this new world and they are still them. They don't become new characters and stuff. No, they are who they are, dropped into a new world. And they go on to play specific roles in the story based on prophecy, based on just who they are and, and how they end up applying into the needs of Fionavar. But they don't stop being who they are, which, you know, something's a little different in Guardians of the Flame. Now, Zach, you seem to be doing some sideshow in the background. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I just dropped, dropped something, something I was fiddling with. Okay. All right. I have a hard time sitting um, still for these recordings. I'm usually fiddling with something. This time I dropped it. <sighs> There are two key elements of this story that have a specific impact uh, that I value about Kay's writing. Uh, One is that the characters, these five who come from our world into Fionavar, they have some real baggage, real world baggage. They, They carry emotional trauma from things that have happened in their lives that distinctly impacts their actions and the contributions they make in Fionavar. So that's one thing. And I thought he does a pretty good job. Uh, There are some issues I have with how he handles that, but pretty good. Okay. The other thing that I think he does better is there's a direct tie-in from our Arthurian legends, King Arthur, Guinevere, Lancelot, that sort of thing, into the Fiona of our storyline. Just to be clear here, structurally, are we past the facts and into strengths? Like no no this is this is this still, is still just facts fact. you're just giving facts. opinionated facts. Uh, I, it slipped in. Okay, come on. So, <laughs> but these Arthurian legends are embedded into the Fiona of our storyline. So that's something that he brought into this trilogy that gives more meaning and greater purpose to the Arthurian legends. <laughs> so it was kind of an interesting thing that Guy Gabriel K does in writing this trilogy. Now, again, I mentioned this was his first published works. He's gone on to write a lot of other things now, really leaning into the fantasy genre. I've also read the next novel in the sequence that he published, not in the trilogy. It's something different. But the very next book he published was four years later, uh, Tagama. Hmm. And it's awesome. It's a standalone fantasy book. I've got a, uh, I've got an episode out just talking about Tagama. It's really strikingly higher quality. 
so even within the trilogy, I feel you can see growth in the author. You know, in the first book, The Summer Tree comes out one year, and then two years later, you got the other two books. And I think you can see a growth in his writing style already within the trilogy, but then jump four later years later to Tagana, and it's like, wow. Now, I'm not saying this to say that the Fionavar trilogy is bad literature and you shouldn't read it. That's not where I'm going in the just the facts. I'm just saying it is his initial public work, published works. And now that I've also read Tagana, you know, I can say it shows. Guy Gabriel K, like most authors, get better as they continue to develop their craft. And so when you read, if you read the Fiona of our tapestry and you like it, you probably should keep reading K because it's only going to get better. Okay. No, I'm, I think I'm going to stake my claim on it. This has been the most subjective, <laughs> just the facts part of any of these episodes we've ever done, both oh, man, for sorry, and dude. against. It's just been pros and cons <laughs> everywhere throughout these facts. Last little bit in this section. <laughs> this is straight facts now. You sure? Of these three books, only the second one won any awards, was nominated for awards. Uh, the Wandering Fire took home the pre-Aurora Award in English. I was like, in English? What? So I had to look this up. It's an annual award in Canada for the best science fiction and fantasy works in a given year. So for Canadian authors specifically and of course canada they has two primary languages english and english a french, and french version of the yeah. award so in the english category it won the best uh the best fantasy fiction that year so obviously guy gabriel k is canadian that's fact the wandering fire also won the 1987 casper award for best speculative fiction i found that on wikipedia and then I researched, I hadn't heard of that at all. I researched the Casper Awards and couldn't mm -hmm. find a blooming thing about them. So I was, okay, this was, I just couldn't, I had to say it. I was ghosted as I sought out the answers. But I'm, thank you, thank you, I'm here. It's but not I'm quite good. using the term right, but also. I know, but come I, on. Yeah, I kind of got to go for it, right? <laughs> it, when it's right there. Oh, absolutely. All right. That's the facts. Let's okay. move on to personal experiences with the Fiona Bar Tapestry. I only know this exists because our patron, uh, Jordo, he said this was one of his favorite early fantasy reads and really recommended I read it. I think it's fair to so, say the fantasy for the ages experience on both sides of this starts with Jordo, period. Mm-hmm. So I went ahead, I added it to my TBR, fairly high up, and I read this, oh goodness, early 2021, mid-2021. It, it was first half of the year that I, I read it, so over a year ago. And I went into it confidently and boldly, and I struggled with the first book, Personal Experiences. I was like... What? I, mm, I, honestly, I was questioning why everybody thought Guy Gabriel K was so awesome. Because <sighs> I wasn't digging it. The first book, I was the way he was writing some of this stuff felt so clunky and <laughs> handled poorly. And I'm, I mentioned emotional trauma being part of this. And some of how he's trying to put that into the story felt so badly handled that... Mm, it took me out of the story more than once. Interesting, But I like Jordo. So I kept on. I got that book done, moved on to the second book, and I was happy to say the second book was much better read for me than the first book. And the third book and the second book were both pretty much at a level for me. I enjoyed them both. The first book was necessary to appreciate the second and third. I still don't have good feelings about the first book. I'm just Interesting. like, hmm. So that was my personal experience. What do you think, Zach? So I took a little longer to actually get to this series. Um, I read the first one two months ago now. Um, I read the second one 
Well, I finished it today. Uh, <laughs> I read it so in you about have not finished the trilogy yet. three days, uh, including finishing it today, and I've started the third. I am in the third. But I have not finished it yet. I was and trying me to finish a culpa, it. People, I I set this on the schedule. We're going to do it here. But Zach does have a life and things he's got to do. So yeah, well, I tried to push. finish it, but then some things came up, some things had to be shifted in my schedule. I ended up having significantly less time yesterday than I thought I was going yep. to for yep. just book time. So I didn't get a chance to just blow through. But uh, notice, nothing I said in personal experience was meant to discourage you from finishing the trilogy. Because uh, yeah. you've made it I through the not, first two, you should definitely read number I'm three. I'm going to. I'm reading. I am in Good. book three. I'm just not done with it. Um, as opposed to you, I didn't mind the first one. However, I thought it was a very good call on my part to do audiobook. Because I mm. I noticed something about it that I often have some struggles with uh, some older fantasy books, uh, especially as they try to be a, a certain elevated nature. And the language can get boring to read in the way mm. that it's constructing its sentences. It can be great material, and I just have a hard time reading it on a page and staying engaged. Audiobook, I can manage it, and I, I can really, really enjoy it. I definitely didn't feel quite what you did uh, on the first one. Um, okay. But I had my own struggles with it, so that is fair. The second one felt about equivalent in terms of, like, how much I did or didn't like it. Um, but it did have the strength of building off the first. And in a narrative sense, I thought the first one, first three quarters of the book was a mess. But it was intentional that way to build to what it needed to be. Okay. The second one had direction. Yes. The third I've been enjoying... But again, have not finished. All right. General strengths of the series. Again, we tend to go back and forth on our comments on this. So mm -hmm. um, I'll start. Uh, a general strength. And again, I'll draw from just the facts. Uh, the tie-in of the Arthurian legend is one of the stronger aspects of the novel. The way he didn't just borrow from or be inspired by, but actually took the Arthurian legend and embedded it in the trilogy in a really unique way, I thought was cool. I will go uh, for my strength. I'm listing this as a strength, even though it's something that me reading it on the page is one of the reasons why it would I would suffer doing that. This is in many ways a thematic spiritual successor to Tolkien's work. Um, it has a lot of the same feeling and evokes a lot of the same understanding when you look at the prose and descriptions, the way these things are written and the uh, storylines that are kind of drawn has a kind of, it's not the same story. It's not the same thing. It's not just doing Tolkien over again, but it definitely is a, this guy has got this inspiration. It's in there. And it plays some definite homage. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's things I could say with that. I, 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 I'm going to stick to my strengths. <laughs> you go for it. <laughs> um, a, another strength that I, I will put out here then is that... <sighs> He does do a nice job of creating his own unique fantasy world. Uh, now, again, he's writing in the 80s. There weren't as many fantasy worlds out there yet. So it was, it was easier to still be original. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are some people who wrote fantasy, even in the 80s, that were just obvious Tolkien knockoffs. He's not. He's got something that is, he's, he, Tolkien, he was a big fan of Tolkien. That's on mm -hmm. the record with Kay. Mm -hmm. But, I do not see Tolkien's world when I read the Fiona Bar Tapestry. I don't see that at all. 
um the the way he writes some things maybe is inspired by but i don't see tolkien i see a unique world i will however throw in there there are certain races and uh structures in place that it's like no you 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 took that i mean there's there's a group of people that aren't called elves but they're the elves and they're tolkien's (laughs) elves to a t (laughs) <laughs> they take yeah, can't parts to that. their version of an afterlife. I really can't argue that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, and like, there's more we could talk about that, but you haven't read book three, and this well, is spoiler light. So, I mean, mm. there's more we could talk about that, even just from book two. But we're not going into much of any of that. Okay, I have one more strength, but I want to give you a chance. You got another strength? Um, I want to hear yours, and I'll rip off it. I, a strength I will give is that his five core characters who come from our world mm-hmm. are genuinely flawed people. I do like a broken character. Yes, we and and back at this time, a lot of protagonists in in fantasy literature were the good guys and just genuinely good guys, you know. And they're dealing with genuine bad guys. He came up with these emotionally traumatized people and he tried to portray them in a way that was true to the kinds of stuff they've dealt with and how it would have altered them and he mostly succeeds but the fact that he did that was trailblazing and well done so i'll give that a strength while i will have my issues with character development at times and things that's something we can talk about another section i will say all of the characters like there's not really any that are carbon copies of each other they all actually do serve their unique purposes and natures and it's not like i have not to knock it but it's not like i'm reading dragon riders of pern and going yeah they're that writer their their name i don't know they're the writer just like all the other writers they're all writers <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, these, I'm going to know their names, because for the most part, there's a lot of uniqueness to each and every one. I, I'm going to give a shout out to Jason in the chat. He did throw out another great example, a series you don't like, but I, I really an example don't. <laughs> of a true broken protagonist, Thomas Covenant from the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, the Unbeliever. And it's in the same time period that it came out. So that, that is a good callback. We have not done a reader not to read on that one. However, I did DNF the series. So we probably won't. Maybe I'll do my own on that. I do have my own uh, to read or not to read episode scheduled coming up soon. <sighs> I'm going to do one on a series that you haven't touched and probably won't. So, you know, <sighs> just for the heck of it. Anyways, any weaknesses? other strengths? Let's go to oh, weaknesses. We can go to weaknesses now? Oh, Let's good. do it. All right, a weakness that bothered me deeply in book mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. was the way he handled women. I did not like the way he was writing the core women characters, and particularly uh, a situation that happens late in the book with one of the women who's already been traumatized in life, and and then something happens to her that's fundamental to the plot moving forward, but no... Did not like it. Didn't appreciate the way he wrote this. Didn't work for me. I will say what goes on comes through from that later on. At least how he writes that character later on, to be specific. I enjoyed for being a lot more realistic than, say, the Thomas Covenant series. But again, I've told you already on the record, book two and three read better for me than book one. So I had this visceral reaction on book one where I almost didn't continue the trilogy Mm -hmm. because I so disliked it. And then moving on went, all right, I'll give you what you needed to do there. That's fine. Still didn't excuse the quality of how he handled that in my opinion. But he used it moving forward in the plot. Strangely enough, it, it, it is a th- 
thing that often bothers me didn't bother me as much as I would have expected. Um, okay. How about a weakness for you? Yes. Um, this one's going to... It's going to seem like I'm just biased to hard magic systems here. The plot's really convenient. A lot. Oh, yeah. There are yes. so many times when something, either a person or an item or a magic or a whatever is conveniently in the right place at the right time in the right way and it all works and it has a deus it, ex magica yeah. there's an in-world explanation usually uh, to say <laughs> yeah no this is very convenient and worked out and it was planned by a force that we're not expecting kind of thing but that's really just a cop out to not do this in like i get you're doing it intentionally that's cool but for having broken characters in such a realistic way, I personally found it to be a weakness that the story was not as gripping and realistic as the characters within it. And often when those characters were serving those roles that just deus ex that character, um, <laughs> they were the least that character. Yeah. It was often out of character. See, to me, you're describing, again, now what I'll say is my next weakness, and it's the only other weakness I'm going to point out, and it's just that the overall story design shows his inexperience as a writer at this point. And I, I put that in there in part because I've read Tagana, and I see how much better he gets. So... There is some of the laziness. Now, I'm throwing that word out there. It's the not lazy write writing. It's, anything yeah. better than I can. I, I'm yeah. not trying to say that he's not a good author. Not at all. But compared to other stuff I've read and compared to where I know he goes as an author, it's somewhat weak at times. And, and what and I that's will what you're say, too. What I will say for it is it's intentional. Because there are times where you can see this something that we know it's going to conveniently lay. He's intentionally in. weak writing. No, what? you can see where it's going to like conveniently happen to work out. You can see it foreshadowed multiple times, like in a different book or at least earlier on. But you also are like, you can tell you're setting this up to be convenient and make the rest of your characters look stupid oh. for not thinking about it. Too obviously foreshadowed. A little bit. Yeah. And that's where he needed to develop some more depth in his writing and in his plot planning and such. It just all all of these thicker themes when it comes to the plot, the foreshadowing, the uh, reveals, the ways that prophecy comes through was a little heavy handed. And this is where it's almost not fair when we talk about a series written in the 80s. Because in the 80s, people might have felt this was a lot cooler. Because, I mean, I just finished reading uh, The Faithful and the Fallen by John Gwynn. So much more intricate. intricate, intricate. Wow, I can't. Wow, you can't speak. You already used your talk, one big man. word of the day. You can't say intricate. Intricate. So much more intricate. So much more depth. The foreshadowing is so, the layers are so more detail and, oh, uh, now it's four books instead of three, but that is not the difference. And it's just a different level and quality of writing, but it's written much more recently. You know, it's built on the layers of what's been established in fantasy. So back when this was written, there wasn't so much out there. This felt fresher. This didn't feel as simple. I'm and sure. I will say, this is not knocking the quality of the prose, per se. Uh, he has beautiful writing through a lot of it. Uh, there are It's very intelligently written. But sometimes the writing design is what's lacking. I'm going to toss out one other thing now that I'm, I'm jumping out of order. It's maybe a strength again. <laughs> you mentioned the soft... 
the, the weakness of the magic system. Mm-hmm. But I, and again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I like what it introduced with the way the magic worked involving characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to say more than that. No, I know I where you're I know going. You, mean, you know what I mean? And what I think you're getting at is something that I've considered being a major implement in one of my later D D campaigns because i nice. think it's, so you i do it think too. it's interesting i there's a cool element to the way he did the it's magic a small thing i think that was fresh but and I think original it's fun. with him yeah okay would you ever read this again well you haven't finished it yet so i am gonna fin- say that look i am gonna finish it there's not a chance i'm rereading this and i would not read this again it fits into the category of stuff I missed because I, mean, I was alive in the 80s. I was reading in the 80s. I missed this trilogy in the 80s. Didn't ever become aware of it. So it fits in that category of filling in holes on my TBR. Stuff I should have read, foundational fantasy that I missed. So I'm glad I read it, but been there, done that. I'm enjoying the journey. It's a very wandering journey at times, uh, especially that wandering fire. Uh, sorry, I just had to. Oh, um, but like a lot of journeys that you kind of wander about and see the different aspects, then eventually see the end. Um, I, it's, a, it's a thing that once I've explored, I don't need to go back and do it again. I, I've I've seen it. I've done it. Let's go to a new exactly. adventure. Yep. All right. Rating scale one to a hundred and. How would we subjectively rate this series compared to everything else we've read in fantasy fiction? You go first. You finished it. 35. Ouch. Yeah, I I don't look back on this trilogy super fondly. Again, I'm glad I read it. But there's so much. Again, it's compared to everything else I've read. There's so much more I've read that I enjoyed more than the Fiona Bar Tapestry. With both what I've read and where I've placed other things previously, I'm going to give this like a 60. Wow. Um, And that's, I'm enjoying it. And I'll tell you right now, I like it better than the Chronicles of Narnia. As a complete series so far? Mm, Yeah. No. But that's because as a complete series, I don't really like the Chronicles of Narnia. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that some of the same flaws that I have with the Fiona Var tapestry, I have with that. And this is better (laughs) better written prose, at least. It's more interesting. The characters are flawed. I enjoy especially as an adult reading this, I enjoy this more. Okay. I can I, understand that. It's not one of the best things I've ever read. I'm not going to rave about it. I disagree it. with you. The guy Gabriel K's prose is better than C.S. Lewis. Mm-hmm. I won't argue with that. I'm not going to rave about this book and go tell people, you have to read this. But I'm also definitely not going to regret reading it. I am actually enjoying it. Good. Glad you're enjoying it. And then get back to Dresden Files, because, man, that's a lot better. Actually, <laughs> the moment I finish this next book, I'll be getting back to the Ryera. Ra- 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 Ryera Chronicles. Ryera Ra- books. Yeah, that's another um, fun one. So finish the first one of that and going back to the second of that before you make Wait, me do Ra- a three Ra- or not to read on that one. Not Ryera Chronicles. Ra- Ra- Chronicles Ra- is a Revelations. prequel thing, isn't it? Correct, yeah. That okay. one, then. Our last question, what sort of person do we think might enjoy this series? So for me, mm-hmm. hmm, old school fantasy fans uh, who appreciate flawed protagonists. Yeah, to me, the number one thing is if you like fantasy and when people come up to you, you go and go, oh, you like that? Okay, what kind of fantasy do you like? And you go, oh, you know, like Tolkien tell them to read this book if they haven't. Um, th- there's other things and definitely places where you may enjoy this. Uh, if you want something that 
is still a let's put it this way there's a lot of hard magic systems in fantasy nowadays this is not one of them if hard magic bothers you this might work for you um if you like epic fantasy and like world building but you don't want to get too deep into some of the minutia you just want to stay on some of the grander scale this could be great for you uh if you really enjoy some of these more greater allegorical themes uh if you want to get into something that has a lot of the wheel of time pattern weaving kind of vibes and like <laughs> that very heavy prophetic thing this does a lot of that so like that that could be cool i think it's an interesting read for a lot of people who are into fantasy i'm not re recommending this to anyone who doesn't already read fantasy i'm just not yeah oh yeah this is not gateway fantasy nah all right that's what we got then for this episode. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Let me run our outro. Should show up. There it is. There it is. Thank you all, all for ways, watching or listening or whatever. All the ways you can connect with us are shown on the screen here. We're also in the show notes. So if you're listening to the audio version, look up those notes. Love to see you join us on Discord and chat about stuff you enjoy. Uh, we do have an email. Feel free to email us. We also have a Patreon. So if you'd like to join us and chat during these episodes like Jason has been doing here today, a dollar a month gets you in to our Patreon family. We appreciate the support. You can pay more. It starts at a dollar a month. All right. Thanks for being here, everyone. We'll talk to you next time.